In this lecture, we're going to cover the topic of question formulation. In terms of an HR analytics project lifecycle, question formulation really is the first and most important phase when you're just starting out. Following question formulation, you can then get into activities and phases like data acquisition, data management, data analysis, as well as interpretation and storytelling and deployment and implementation of anything that you find. But before we start that whole process, we need to first come up with a good set of questions or hypotheses. So we're talking about question formulation. We're talking about a process of posing strategy-inspired research questions and or hypotheses. Now, the questions that we formulate are often inspired by formal or informal theories of human behavior we might have. These might be from academic journals and so forth, and they also might be from our own informal theories that we develop within the company of how we think things operate. Now, if you recall, a theory is a set of propositions pertaining to a particular phenomenon. And so these set of propositions are a way for understanding, explaining the world around us, and particularly that phenomenon of interest. So if we're interested in turnover, there might be different types of theories that we can access, whether formal or informal in nature. For instance, the unfolding model of turnover might be an important step for us to, or important theory for us to look at when trying to anticipate what factors really contribute to voluntary turnover within an organization. Now, in terms of making effective and generating effective question form, uh, questions as part of the question formulation phase, this is going to have some really pronounced effects, particularly if it's done really well. And so this can result in greater efficiencies regarding data acquisition, management, and analysis, for starters. And so what that means is that when we have a specific question or questions in mind, we're going to be more targeted and efficient with the data we acquire, that we manage, and that we analyze. Now, in addition, Findings are going to be more meaningful to stakeholders when we have effective questions that have been formulated. And that is because if they truly are strategy inspired, they're going to be getting at something that's really targeting the business side of the organization, that's driving something that's important to the organization and its strategic objectives and its way of obtaining or achieving or maintaining a competitive advantage. Now, in terms of the value of starting with theory when it comes to question formulation, Theories do provide, again, that platform for generating research questions and or hypotheses. Through those sets of propositions about the phenomenon, you can start to anticipate and even plan on what types of research questions you could potentially ask as well as hypotheses. So what is the distinction between a research question and a hypothesis? Well, you can think of research questions being more broad and exploratory, and they are a general line of inquiry regarding a phenomenon of interest. A hypothesis, on the other hand, is, is really a statement about the association between two or more variables. And it tends to be more definitive in nature. It tends to be more specific. So you're also going to typically describe in a hypothesis not just what the association is going to be between two or more variables, but also the nature of that association. Is there going to be a positive relationship or negative relationship? Is there going to be a large difference or a small difference and so forth? So let's start with some examples of research questions. And so these are some different examples around the concept of turnover, the phenomenon of turnover. First, does engagement predict voluntary turnover? How does engagement relate to voluntary turnover? What work characteristics predict voluntary turnover? And why do new employees turn over in the first six months? So each of these are asking slightly different things. But note that they are mostly exploratory in nature. We don't necessarily know whether or not engagement is going to predict turnover. So before stating that it's going to be maybe a negative relationship, if we don't have a basis for this, we should probably start with just the question, does engagement predict voluntary turnover at all? And also, as you can see, what characteristics predict voluntary turnover? This is more exploratory in nature. We might have a number of different work characteristics in mind, and we can see which ones are the best predictors of who's going to stay or leave the organization. Now, in contrast, here's some examples of hypo hypotheses that more or less correspond to those four different research questions I just showed you. So the first hypothesis is engagement is negatively related to voluntary turnover. Maybe based on a formal theory that we have access to, we have strong belief that engagement should be negatively related to voluntary turnover. And so we actually want to test that statement or that hypothesis within the data we have access to. Now, another example is turnover intention mediates the relationship between engagement and voluntary turnover. So this is really a hypothesis that's getting at the mechanism or the process by which 
you have engagement influencing voluntary turnover amongst employees. And the mechanism is believed to be, or at least what you're stating here, is turnover intentions or those cognitions or thoughts of quitting the organization. Another example would be autonomy and task significance are going to negatively predict voluntary turnover. And then finally, new employees who do not participate in the formal onboarding program are more likely to turn over during the first six months of their, employee, uh, their, their employment in the company. Okay, so this is really talking about the difference between people who are in the formal onboarding program and those who were not in that program and whether or not one group is more likely to turn over than the other. But again, here you're stating those people that did not participate in that onboarding program are going to be more likely to leave the company during those first six months. Now, let's focus on the impact of having a good question, whether it's a research question or a hypothesis, on data acquisition and management. As I mentioned before, this can make things more efficient on this end. A well-written and well-informed research question and hypothesis can inform the type of data gathered and managed during, during the data acquisition and management phases. It'll make sure that you're not collecting things that are superfluous or unnecessary. It'll make sure that you're collecting things that are very targeted data that are going to actually help you answer the questions that you formulated initially. So here's an example. Let's use that first hypothesis engagement is negatively related to voluntary turnover. As you can see here, this hypothesis, which is part of our question formulation phase, gives us a good idea of what we should, what kind of data we should acquire or measure or collect. So it's stating that the two variables of interest here are engagement and voluntary turnover. Well, our next question is, well, how are we going to measure these things? Well, maybe using engagement, that's a self-report survey, or maybe we have observer reports from their supervisor. So an employee's supervisor rates the supervisor's perception of that employee's engagement. Now, in terms of voluntary turnover, this, might, this is probably going to come from different employment records that we have access to. So this could be data already residing in the HR information system. And so in some ways, when it comes to managing the data, we'd have to join these two likely sets of data that are in different data frames or in different databases or in different data tables. Now, Alternatively, if we don't think we can access voluntary turnover data or at least match it with the engagement data from the same group of employees, we could potentially kind of get a little bit of an easier option. Maybe we're interested in looking at turnover intentions as sort of a proxy for voluntary turnover, where you might be asking employees as part of that same survey where you ask them about their engagement, how likely is it that you're going to leave the company in the next six months or whatever the time frame might be? Now, in terms of question formulation's impact on data analysis, interpretation, and storytelling, a well-written and well-informed research question will lead to more efficient data analysis, and it really helps you interpret and guide you through the storytelling process. Now, beginning with data analysis, good question formulation will keep you focused and targeted on the analyses that need to be run. In fact, I recommend anytime you're doing an HR analytics project, have the questions or the hypotheses on a piece of paper are posted somewhere above the computer where you're doing your analyses or whomever's doing the analyses. And just have the person constantly look at that and remember, okay, the purpose of this is to answer this question using these data. Now it can be really, really um, especially exciting when you get new data to start looking for different relationships you weren't originally looking for. Well, you can capitalize on chance and potentially spurious correlations if you engage in too extensive data mining. Alternatively, that can pull you away from the focus of this data inquiry that you're engaged in at this point. So make sure that you think very, very carefully and that you have a strong focus on what your question actually is when you're engaging in that data analysis process. Now, in terms of interpretation and storytelling, having a clear question makes it much easier to interpret because it really constrains how you're focusing on things. Presumably, you already had a theory in mind, whether informal or formal in nature, that can help you understand and explain the findings that you came to. The same goes for storytelling. The question can really be a talking point of where you started and what you found with regard to that question. Did you find answers to it? Now, finally, the deployment and implementation phase will inspire new research questions and hypotheses. So as you go to deploy the findings and implement things, it can really make you think carefully about, okay, maybe there's some new things we need to consider here now that we're seeing this implementation in action. So for instance, if you implemented a new onboarding process or onboarding training program, perhaps as you've implemented it and analyzed the data around it, whether or not it's effective, you come up with new ideas regarding and new questions around how can we make this more efficient? 
Okay, this seemed to work really well, but how could we do this with less? Or how can we do this in a shorter amount of time? So as a guiding principle, when we're talking about question formulation, remember that research questions and hypotheses should be generated with a strategy in mind, with the HR strategy and with the organization strategy. Make sure that you're doing something that's in the service of the organization and its employees. It can be a lot of fun to look through data and find and explore the data, but the most efficient and effective way is typically going to be to have strategy in mind and really help that guide you through this project. And setting the HR analytics project lifecycle in motion with good question formulation is an important first step. So again, this is one of the first phases. This is the first phase question formulation of that HR analytics project lifecycle. And with that, we wrap up the lecture on question formulation.